A warrior becomes a worrier. See how this can happen. Stay tuned for this important message. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. This morning, I want to share with you a story in the scripture how a warrior, a great warrior, became a worrier because he listened to the wrong voice. This can happen to us. We're going to read quite a bit of scripture, but I hope you will button your seatbelt and hang on for the ride, folks, because this is going to be worth it to you. Because I believe that God's people in this hour, many are listening to the wrong voice. And they end up worrying instead of being a warrior. <clears throat> now, let's begin our reading in 1 Samuel. If you want to follow along in the Word of God. 1 Samuel chapter 26. Now, if you have any knowledge of David and, and Saul, how Saul kept, you know, basically threatening David's life and chasing David because he envied David. Uh, if you know anything about that story, then you'll know, uh, you know, a little bit more about what's going on here. And here is one of these episodes where Saul is basically, once again, chasing David. Uh, trying to kill him. Trying to get rid of him. Because he, he envies him. He thinks he's going to take his place. And uh, Saul, I'm sure, found out about David being anointed king. And uh, maybe even Jonathan must have, may, at times, had talked to Saul about it. And I'm sure when Saul heard you know, those in his kingdom that were saying David or Saul has slain his thousands and, and uh, David slain his ten thousands, it bothered him. And it's amazing how envy and jealousy can really wreak havoc in relationships. Because uh, we see in the scripture that Saul did love David, but an evil spirit would come upon Saul many times, which we know to be the devil that was trying to destroy David. But we find in this story that Saul did not hate David. He wasn't uh, wanting to kill him. It was a spirit that was operating through Saul, through his weakness or through his insecurity. We find in this story that Saul actually loved David very much when he found out the truth that David wasn't trying to uh, you know, hurt Saul in any way. In fact, it was just the opposite. David was Saul's servant, and he respected and had tremendous reverence for the Lord's anointed. As a man, without the anointing, I, you know, I don't know if David really had a whole lot of respect for Saul, but he respected the anointing. You may not always agree with your pastor or someone in authority that's over you, uh, but you're supposed to respect the word of God and you're supposed to reverence and respect the anointing. Amen? So let's go into the story here. And as I said, we're going to read quite a bit. So uh, we will have a good scope, uh, in-depth, and you'll understand what's going on. I want to read quite a bit here. Uh, in this scene, David is being chased by Saul. And as we will read here, Saul is basically getting some rest and he's got his army surrounding him. 
But David was very wise and very favored by God to the degree that he could get close to the king. And, uh, and this is where we uh, pick up right here in the story. In verse 5 of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 26. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay. And Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host, and Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. You got to understand, they are protecting their king, right? But David being the warrior that he is, he's a warrior. He's very, very quiet on his feet. Uh, he's not being, uh, you know, drawing attention to himself. He's being very quiet. Then answered David and said to Amalek the Hittite, to Abishai the son of Zerah, brother to Job, or Joab, excuse me, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with thee. So David and Abishai, or Abishai, came to the people by night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Now you would think that David would not be able to get close to Saul, right? Because everybody's around him. But they're all, remember, they're all sleeping. These are pretty sound sleepers. Or David's very, very, very cunning and very uh, wise and, and quiet on his feet. Uh, maybe the Navy SEALs, our military, could learn something from David. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him. I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. Now, David's being tested. Is Abishai hearing from God? Is this really God? Now, you think about it. If there was anything in the heart of David that was looking for an opportunity or looking for an excuse to kill Saul, and he believed that Abishai was hearing from God, he would have acted, right? And David said to Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? You know how many times I've wanted to <laughs> go take it into my own hands, brothers and sisters. You know how many times I've wanted to go to some of these mega churches and take the sword of the, uh, of the spirit and slay some, uh, some devils? And go down there and give the truth to these, these people that are being deceived. You can't just go stretch forth your hand. You can't just go do whatever you want to do. You've got to wait on the Lord. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Because if the Lord's not with you, it's not going to be to any avail anyway. It's not going to work. But I'll tell you, there's been. I remember one time in Bible school, my pastor went down the hallway and he was in, he was very angry and it wasn't flesh it was it was righteous anger and i said pastor where are you going and he was in i mean he actually took the time to stop and 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 tell me where he was going and he said we'll see who's god answers by fire and uh he was he he was headed to florida he was going to go down and face benny hinn and uh he never went, but that's what he wanted to do. But how many know, amen, that uh, we're not to, you know, God, Jesus even said, let the tares grow. Let the tares grow among the wheat, right? God's going to deal with the enemies. God will deal with the liars and the deceivers. You and I are not to be dealing with them. We can expose them, 
as far as helping our own congregation and our own listeners to know the difference between a real man of God and a false and a real minister and false minister. But we're not to go down and take it into our own hands and and uh, try to expose them as far as in their own congregations. No, the Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. How many know that God is bundling up the tares right now? Amen. They're being bundled. These big mega churches, they're being bundled. They're enemies of the cross. So we don't need to go in. I saw recently, not too long ago, there's a YouTube video with this. I don't know if he's a pastor or not, but he went to a Joel Osteen meeting and he stood in the midst and he rebuked Joel Osteen. And yeah, it, you know, it got some, uh, you know, some, and I'm not sure if it went viral, but it got some uh, recognition on YouTube a little bit. And uh, But you know what? Did God really lead that man to go down there and do that? I don't know if he did or not. But we see in the scripture that David is being told that God has told him he can kill this certain anointed uh, king of Israel. Uh, and David, being led by God and having a heart after God, rejects that word, even though I'm sure there was something in, maybe in his flesh or something in his emotions that would have liked to have done it. I'm tired of running from Saul, and God has anointed me to be king. What do I got to keep running for? But he respected and reverenced the anointing. See, David had respect for God. He respected God's choice, even though Saul was not a good man. Are you listening? Uh, you know, I remember I said to my my I said to the Lord one day about my pastor. I said something. I'm not going to tell you what I said, but I said something. And the Lord spoke to me, and He said, "He's just a man." He may be anointed by me, but he's just a man. Sometimes we put our pastors, we put, you know, people in the ministry, we put them on a pedestal, right? And that's not what we should be doing. It's dangerous to put a man on a pedestal. So let's go on and continue to read. And David said to Abishai, destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him. Notice that David is giving vengeance to the Lord. Amen. God will smite him or his day shall come to die or he shall descend into the battle and perish. I'm going to leave him to God is what David is saying. I'm going to let God deal with Saul. And the Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster and the cruise of water and let us go. Think about that. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster or bolster and they gat them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was falling upon them. So God caused a deep sleep to come upon David's enemies. Amen? Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like unto thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king. Can you imagine Abner? He was shocked. What are you talking about, David? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king, thy lord. He didn't even tell him who it was. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth, you are worthy to die, because you have not kept your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is and the cruise of water that was at his bolster. 
And Saul knew David's voice and said, Is this the voice of my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. You see the respect and reverence that David has for the king, for the Lord's anointed. And he said, Wherefore doth my lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in my hand? Why are you chasing me, Saul? What have I done? Now, therefore, I pray thee, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the Lord have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men that are stirring you up, Saul, cursed be they before the Lord. For they have driven me out of this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Now, therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel is come out to seek a flea, as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul, listen to, listen to this, then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. Oh, yeah, sure, Saul. That's just you talking again. Was he? Was he, folks? Was Saul just talking? Were these just the words of an idle talk of, a, of, of this king? Well, let's continue to read. And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear. And let one of the young men come over and fetch it. <laughs> I wonder which young man was uh, thrown under the bus, so to speak, thinking, oh yeah, you got to send me over there to get that spear. David's going to kill me. But if the king tells you to go, you go. Amen? And so if, if David's a man of his own word, of his, of his word, then this young man that's being sent over to get the spear is in good hands, right? He's going to be safe. But what if David wasn't a man of his word? And what if he wasn't a man of integrity? Then maybe he might kill this young man that's coming over to get this sword. But listen to what happens. The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today. But I would not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. I'm sure this young man now is thinking, hey, he had a chance to kill the king and he didn't kill him. I guess I'm all right. I guess I'll be safe if I go over and get this spear. How many know, folks, a lot of us were ruled by our fears, right? Worried, fearful. Well, this warrior that's sent over by Saul to get the spear, we don't know if he was afraid or not. Nonetheless, he did go over and get this spear. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in my eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Listen to this. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. Now listen to this. Listen to this, folks. This is the message. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel, so shall I escape out of his hand. Are you listening, folks? Saul just told David, I'm not going to chase you anymore. I'm not going to go after you anymore, David. But David's listening to the wrong voice, people. Whether it's the devil or his own inner voice of his own insecurity, David's listening to the wrong voice. 
And this voice is saying to David, whether it's his fears speaking or the devil speaking through his fears, I believe it was the devil. You're going to you're going to die by this man. This 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 man's going to kill you one day. But Saul just got done telling David, "I'm not going to chase you anymore. I'm not going to kill you, David." Listen to what happens. And David arose and he passed over with 600 men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives. Listen to this. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath. Listen. And he sought no more again for him. See, every time that Saul's people would come to him and say, David's over here. David, Saul would get stirred up and go after David. But this time, Saul no longer is going to chase David. He was becoming a man of his word. David's character, David's integrity had changed Saul. Are you listening? So why is David running into the Philistines country? Because he's listening to the wrong voice. David has become a warrior. Instead of a warrior, he's now a warrior. He's worried. He's fearful. How did a great warrior become a warrior? Because he's listening to the wrong voice. And because he is believing a lie. That's what changes you and I from warrior, warriors to warriors. Just the difference of one letter. Just one little letter. But what a change there is in a person that goes from a warrior to a worrier. Amen? If you listen to the wrong voice, you listen to your fears, it'll cause you to not only get off track and end up in the enemy's territory, but you won't be in the Lord's favor like you was when you was listening to his voice. Look what happens to David and his family. We go on and read and find out that David ends up in Ziklag. This is the Philistines' territory, people. And while David was in the Philistines' territory, war broke out. Are you listening? And the scripture says that the Philistines came and attacked David's family because David was with his soldiers out fighting with the Philistines. And while they were fighting, the Philistines came in and they attacked and they burned Ziklag and they took David's wives and family captive. Are you listening? Now, I'd like to apply what's going on right now in the United States. While the United States is at war on the outside with different countries and eventually going to be at war with Russia and China outwardly, China and Russia are going to attack not only from outward towards the United States, but inwardly from the United States. I do believe with all my heart that Donald Trump is listening to the wrong voice, being advised by the wrong people, maybe even, and this has been out in the news lately, that Donald Trump is actually receiving misinformation from his own CIA, from his own, from the Pentagon. The Pentagon is actually giving him wrong information. He's listening to the wrong voice. And he's concerned about the enemy without. But you don't hear Donald Trump dealing with the enemy within people. The enemy is in this country already. There are foreign troops on our soil right now. You listening to me? There's China and there's Russian 
troops, there are troops right here in the United States of America on foreign, foreign troops in our soil right now. Not only that, but now they're talking about Obama has tapped his phones and they're talking about a shadow government going on. Folks, this is not fairy tales. This is on our soil right now. What happened with David is going on right now in the United States of America. Because I believe our leadership is listening to the wrong voice. Are you listening? Donald Trump's about to send our troops, to send our soldiers in harm's way, sending them out when he should be fortifying the United States of America. He should keep the soldiers right here, not be out there. They should be here and surrounding Donald Trump, who would be a representative of our king or our president. You understand what I'm saying to you? But I believe that Donald Trump is building up our military not to protect the United States because he's listening to the wrong voice. He's going to send them out and abroad to fight in a war outside the United States. And I believe with all my heart, the Middle East is going to be a great war getting ready to culminate. And it's going to be between Iran, Israel, and Russia, and the United States of America, and China will be in there as well, and other countries will be in there. But while all this is going on, the enemies within the United States destroying from within. Are you listening, folks? This is no laughing matter. The enemy is within right now in the United States of America. The Lord told me at least a year ago, he said, the worm is in the apple. I said, Lord, what do you mean? And he reminded me that New York is known as the apple. It's known as the big apple, the great apple. Listen, folks, the worm that is in the apple is David Rockefeller. It is the Council on Foreign Relations. It is the United Nations. There's a new world order coming, and they're going to sacrifice the United States of America for the new world order. And Donald Trump is fighting the war without, while the real problem is on the inside. David, wake up! Realize you're listening to the wrong voice. Oh, my. This is serious, people. This is serious. Serious, serious, serious. Nothing to play with. When you have a leader that's being advised with those in his own cabinet that are really working with the enemy, I'm going to tell you there are still right now remnants of Obama's administration still in the White House and still in the Pentagon. There are enemies within. Are you listening? Somebody needs to wake up Donald Trump. Somebody needs to pray for him. Look at, look, listen, folks, Donald Trump, just like Saul of Tarsus, can be converted by Jesus. Our country's in trouble. But if Donald Trump does not be converted and, and listen to the right voice, our country is headed for peril. Our country is headed for destruction. They have planned this. They're not just planning to bring down the Twin Towers. They're planning on the United States being that phoenix that's going to arise from the ashes. They're not concerned about, it's like George Bush Sr. said. He said, what's at stake is more than a small country. The United States is the small country he was talking about. He says, what's at stake here is more than just a small country. It's a big idea. A new world order can emerge out of these uncertain times. A new world order. Are you listening? I don't know fully where Donald Trump stands, but I do know the position he's in and he holds right now. God can intervene, people. If a real prophet of God could get to to Donald Trump, look, 
He's already been listening to the false prophets, the, the Paula Whites, and putting uh, prayer shawls on, on, over him from Israel. He's listening to the false boys. He's listening to the enemy. But somebody with the word of God, a real man of God, a real prophet, get to Donald Trump with the word of God. But can is it possible to get the real word of God, the real voice of God, to Donald Trump in this hour? Because if it's not, if nobody ever reaches the leader of this country with the word of God, with the truth, then this country is not going to be helped. That's how serious this is. A great warrior became a worrier. If Donald Trump begins to worry people, you know he's listening to the wrong voice. I don't know about you, but Donald Trump's not, I don't believe Donald Trump's getting any sleep these days. I think he's bitten off more than he can chew. And he realizes he's not a president. He realizes this is no game. He realizes this is not the apprentice. He's realizing now this is bigger than I thought. He's realizing now that this is no game. Are you listening? We need to pray for our president, people. We need to be praying for our David. Are you listening? He may be a wicked man. I don't know what he is, but God can intervene. That's the only hope we have for this country is that we pray and God intervenes. Wouldn't it be amazing if God really saved Donald Trump? If he really got saved, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be so amazing? And turn this country around? Can it happen, people? Can it really happen? As long as the false prophets are the ones that are advising Donald Trump. Are you listening? As long as the mega churches are, are influencing him, and as long as there are enemies in the Pentagon and the CIA is giving him the wrong advice, our leader is going to lead our country into trouble. All out war. The Cold War has already begun. Russia's already making aggressive moves towards the United States with their spy ships right on our coast, 30 miles off our coast of New York in Connecticut, gathering information. This is serious, people. How come nobody in the media is talking about the Cold War? How come nobody's talking about how the fact the Cold War is getting warmer? Well, you know the story. I shared it with you. David ended up going out to war and fighting while his own family was being kidnapped. The place that he had thought they were safe was burned with fire. The scripture says David went out to get them. He had to go to war to, and, he, and he retrieved. And this is the what I want to give to you today. David received a word from God, and now he's listening to the right voice again. David, you shall recover all. We need to start listening to the right voice, people. Because if we're losing out in this hour, we're not listening to the right voice. If we're failing in this hour, we're not listening to the right voice. If we truly are listening to the Lord's voice, we will not fail. Amen? We will not lose out. David recovered all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He recovered all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we recover in the United States? Can we recover in our own personal walk with the Lord if we've gotten away from the Lord? Can we recover all? Can we fully be restored? We've got to listen to the right voice. God can make us a warrior instead of a worrier. The world today are a bunch of worriers. I don't know where Donald Trump is. Is he a worrier or is he a warrior? On the surface, it looks like he's a warrior. But I think inside he worries. If he doesn't worry, maybe he doesn't have the capacity to worry. And that's really dangerous for our country. If he's such a psychopath and, 
and, uh, you know, so self-centered and, uh, you know, this individual that is, doesn't have a conscience and then we're really in trouble as a country because then we've got a psychopath that's leading us and he has no feeling, no empathy, then he can't worry. Then he can't worry and that's not good. I'd rather have a president that's worried. At least he's got feeling. But this president may not even have the capacity to worry. And that worries me. If you know what I mean. Brothers and sisters, we need the Lord to deliver us from all worry. Amen. Remember, David worried about something that never came to pass. Saul never chased him again. He was worried about something that never happened. And he ended up in the enemy's country and losing out until he recovered all. All because he listened to the wrong voice. He became a worrier instead of a warrior. I hope this message helps you as it's helped me in my life. God bless you. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you.